Welcome everybody to our newest midweek study. Uh, we are going to continue the conversation that we started this weekend on a book called Joining Jesus on His Mission by Pastor Greg Finke. Uh, if you weren't with us this weekend, if you haven't heard of the book, don't leave us yet because uh, you'll be able to jump in right where you're at. Uh, again, this is a study that is uh, taking place uh, both in person and through the wonders of the internet live on Facebook. Uh, I am uh, so honored to be joined by my lovely assistant, uh, <laughs> Rich. And I have called worse. Yeah, and, and Rich is going to lead um, for our, our uh, uh, in person audience, and I'm going to stay connected to the folks online so that any questions. Uh, that you may have, we can uh, make sure that we discuss. Um, but before we jump in uh, to the study, uh, why don't we begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, you are so good. Uh, we thank you, uh, Father, for your faithfulness, uh, but also uh, as we gather here, uh, we consider your mercy, uh, the way that you uh, love us uh, often, in spite of ourselves. And so, Father, as we gather here and consider what it means to live a faithful life uh, in this world today, uh, we confess to you that we have not always done that. Uh, but Lord, we hope through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the encouragement of your word, and through the prodding of our friends, uh, Lord, that we will uh, truly uh, desire to be about your work in this community uh, for the blessing of all those uh, that we're privileged to come to know and to serve. Uh, bless our uh, time together, oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, take it away. Yeah, for anybody online? I'll tell you in a minute. <coughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Rich. Hi, Rich. I'm back. I don't know if that's good for you or not, but I'm back. Well, uh, everybody's so, checked off line. Yeah, oh, yeah, we all yeah, like, we just lost everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shane, stop it, stop it. <laughs> so before we before we go too far, you know, with friends like this, you don't yeah. you don't need that. Right. Anyway, so um, before we get into sec uh, chapter two, I'm not sure if you did. Everyone get a copy of that. Um, no. There's a, a, a listing of all the things that we're, every chapter we're doing every week. Do you all have that? That was uh, through email. If you so don't? If you're, if you're good at checking your emails, you have it. Yeah. Was it and also it will in, be in the news? It was in the news newsletter as well. Okay, just so, so you don't get lost in any way, shape, fashion, or form, date, time, and place. Um, it is in a, a nice graphic for you, along with each of the chapters that we're going to be attempting to co cover each week. So if you don't have that, when you worship Sunday, you'll be able to pick it up in the newsletter, unless you already did last Sunday, and check your email. If we have your email address, you, you would have gotten that. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so, what, so what was intended this week was Sunday we did chapter 1. And I'm going to come back to that. So you can go to, um, what did we use? What did we, did we use the back? Yeah. So if you, if you um, in your book, if you want to go back to the discussion section, it's around two, uh, 166 or so back in there. Uh, we'll also, by the way, we'll have most of the questions up on the wall, They're on the screen rather. What we would encourage you to do is jot down your thoughts uh, in the back of the book. Um, or at the end of each chapter, there's space at the end of each chapter where you can jot down some thoughts or ideas or some motivation factors that pastor gives you from the sermon or, or whatever, okay? Um, so last Sunday, we did chapter one. What we're going to do tonight is we're just kind of go through the questions rather quickly so that if you had any additional thoughts from Sunday... Uh, you might be willing to share those with us on chapter one, and then we're going to move right into chapter two, first with a video and then in discussion. Does that all make sense? Okay, so remember next week, does anybody have one of those charts? 
What is what is next week? What are we doing next Sunday and next Wednesday? Chapter um, three through six. Yes. The what? Chapter three, three four, five, six. So look at that one because it's five, a big six. deal. So we got to do chapter three. three, four, five, six. It's four chapters with the questions and all. So that's a big week ahead of you, right? So please go through that and get yourself all fired up and prepared. If I don't get my reading done, am I still allowed to come? You're always okay. welcome. All right. And if uh, there's a section, if you read it, uh, where the author says, if you're really not a reader, just go to the summary at the back of the chapter. So yeah. read, read it. At the end of each chapter, there's yeah. a paragraph that says, here's the big idea. The big idea. So if you run out of time, as happens sometimes, uh, just skim the big ideas. Right. And then go to the back and look at those questions and try to give yourself um, prayerful consideration of those, those questions and give us a response. Okay? All right. So um, with that, um, let, me do, let me just, uh, I'm going to just start going through these, I guess, right? So... My gosh, what did I just do? I just, I'm Russian. Tonight I'm Russian, not American. Okay, so here was the first, the first question was, what was one aha moment that you had from the video from the first, actually it was just the first session. Does anybody remember that? They are the first chapter. First chapter, my bad. First chapter. Good, okay. So next question. <laughs> what is Greg asking when he asks this question? He says, how has Jesus been messing with you? Remember, he's a Texan. He and his wife are Texans, and they, they talk about it, messing with you. Okay, so how has Jesus been messing with you? Any, any thoughts on that from after Sunday? Hard to think about Jesus, Jesus messing with you, right? But he does. We're going to keep going with that, by the way. All right. Uh, what did you learn about being an everyday missionary from chapter one? Any thoughts? This is going to be a short night. That's <laughs> all right. Okay. I loved, I loved the concept of I'm not out there doing stuff working for Jesus, trying to sell you on Jesus, or present, you know, hose you down with a whole message. All I have to do is just follow him, join him. He's already, he, the comforting thought to me is, he's working in their lives, yep. in all the people that we meet. And it's sort of like, okay, how's Jesus messing with you? In my own head, I don't say it to them. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, right. That. It's an important big picture point of the book is, is that um, God is still at work in creation, right? A lot of times uh, people have this notion in their head that God was creator of all, and then he just kind of sits back and let it all play out. Or becomes, even worse, becomes disinterested or disgusted by what's going on and pulls back, uh, that, that's not the way God operates, right? God is at work uh, in the world today, and so this how is Jesus messing with you is a question that really um, is a good question for us to ask ourselves every day, because the question is, ask, is, is helping us to become more aware of, so what's God doing here? Yeah, it's important to, to follow the Texas line on this, you know, uh, about messing with you. Um, because many people come up with the idea that, um, what I used to talk about with junior high kids with their, when I was involved in youth ministry, is never, never let yourself get into the boogeyman Jesus thing. And the boogeyman Jesus is going to say, you did that wrong, you did the, the condemning Jesus. Because the condemnation was left on the cross on Good Friday. So the boogeyman Jesus. And then the other one is, do not let, um, if, your father, if your father has disciplined you and it just didn't feel comfortable, do not think that you've got a God that's constantly whipping you and saying that you did it wrong and that's not good enough and all those sorts of things. And so messing with you really doesn't mean that. Messing, to, messing with you is not you know, the boogeyman Jesus or the condemning father. Instead, messing with you means what's he up to? What, what's going on in your life? 
You know, there's a reason for everything. So what's going on in your life? And how is God involved in all that? So it's really a nice way, a Texas nice way of saying, what's going on in your life? And what's God up to? Well, Sharon here online just said, one thing God's up to is every day we seem to be introduced to new people. Right? Absolutely. The Absolutely. people that God places in our path. And, 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 and making that connection that that's probably not a coincidence. Right? A certain person uh, pops into your life or comes back into your life at a certain time. Um, that's probably not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. No. Let yourself, when it comes to this point, well, let yourself be amazed at how many people cross your path in your life, and it's not by mistake, it's by clear intention. God's up to something, and he's up to something good all the time. So I've always been amazed, I've said it over and over again, I don't know how many times in my adult life, I'm astonished at how I have the privilege of crossing paths with you right now. And God's up to something in the whole thing. I don't know what, but the exciting part is being on that adventure and being part of his plan. And here we are together. It's a very exciting thing. So, okay. So uh, that was crossing paths with people. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, in terms of how's God messing with you, well, think about who's he putting in front of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super. Okay. Yeah. Um, the last question, anything else as we move on? By the way, we've really already crossed over into chapter two, and that's fine. Um, the next question is, what have we always done as a church that may no longer meet the needs of our community? Anybody remember what we talked about on Sunday? No, we trying. The, the only thing that comes to my mind is that we've assumed that we're surrounded by Christians that are just looking for a place to worship. We have our form of worship. Come join us. And uh, I'm not sure how new it is, but we're surrounded by a lot of people without a faith or not turned up. It's a we're surrounded by a mission field. Yes. You remember what we said on Sunday about the mission field in America? It's the largest the United States of America is the largest mission field in the world. And statistically that's been proven over and over again for quite sadly for quite a long time. So yeah. Good. Yeah. Other thoughts on this? About what we know what what we do that no longer meets the needs of our community. <coughs> Nothing else? It's okay. It's all right. It's good. All right. So we, now we move on. And the benediction, we're gonna, we, we want you to, would you read this along with me as we go? Because the benediction, I think, is important for us to repeat and repeat and internalize. Okay? So if you join me, and now it's time to begin our new life. No need to be nervous. No need to be afraid. This is what Jesus is preparing for the Lord. Remember, remember, you're not being sent out for him. You're being invited to come along with him. And besides, you want to live out of your friends. So, join Jesus on this redemptive mission. In the name of the Father, who is pleased to give you his kingdom. In the name of the Son, who has risen from the dead. And even now, is on the loose in your community. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who has given you eyes to see, and a heart to respond to the people Jesus has placed around you. Amen. Now we have fun. Okay. Time for the next video. How do we do that? <coughs> Control Alt Delete. Control Alt Delete. Oh, no, no, no. oh oops. <laughs> alt Tab. I'm sorry. <laughs> sent by his father on a grand adventure to redeem and restore human lives to his kingdom. 
Jesus is already on the loose out there, doing the heavy lifting of working in the lives of every human being we see. And he's on the move in your neighborhood too. To Jesus, mission is never an abstract concept or a statement on a wall or a once a year sermon topic. To Jesus, mission is always people, real people, like the people living next door to you, the people working in the office with you, the people who volunteer with you, play on a team with you, go to the same school as you. And Jesus is involved in every one of their lives. Some may not know him, some may not want him, but don't miss this, some may be ready for him. Welcome to this next segment of your mission adventure with Jesus. Last time we began inviting you to look for what Jesus was already up to around you. Well, as you were looking, what did you see? Who did you notice? What was Jesus asking or inviting you to do? For the sake of clarity, we're going to take a couple minutes here at the beginning of this segment to define four terms we're going to use fairly often during this training process. The first one is missional living. Missional living is simply living each day, every day, as if you were on a mission trip to your own neighborhood. We see ourselves as neighborhood missionaries. The second term is missional community. A missional community is a smaller group of neighborhood missionaries who gather regularly to support each other as they learn to live their lives as a mission trip. It looks a lot like this group you are currently meeting with. People in missional communities regularly gather together in order to tell their mission stories, unpack what they have seen, who they have interacted with, and what Jesus may be inviting them to do in all that. By gathering regularly, like this in a missional community, people receive the encouragement, insight, and accountability they need to go back out and join Jesus the next week. As you may know, if you were to do an internet search on the word missional community, you'd find that there's all kinds of definitions floating around out there. So just for the sake of clarity, when, you, when we use the term missional community in this training process, we specifically mean people that see their everyday lives as a mission trip, and then they regularly gather together in order to encourage each other, gain insights from each other, and hold each other accountable in a positive way to this missionary lifestyle. We think it reflects well what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage each other and all the more as we see the day approaching. Or to expand that a little bit, let us consider how we may regularly gather together in order to spur one another on so that we might figure out how the love of God and the good of God can get loose through us into the lives of people around us that need it so badly. And let us encourage each other because it can get pretty discouraging sometimes and all the more as we see the day approaching. That's why we do missional community. It's a place where Hebrews chapter 10 can actually happen. The third term is neighborhood. When we use the term neighborhood, we certainly have in mind the place where we actually live. But we also like to remind people that God has placed us in a variety of neighborhoods. If we understand neighborhood as a uh, network of relationships to which we have regular access. So if we think about it that way, we actually have the neighborhood of our workplace, the neighborhood of where we like to hang out, the neighborhood where we volunteer, the neighborhood where we go to school. So the real question is, who are those that are regularly around us every day? Those are our neighbors. Now, the fourth term is neighboring. Neighboring is a verb. Neighboring is an action word. Neighboring is how we get to know the people in our neighborhood. Yeah, so neighboring then is uh, takes seriously that mission happens best within a context where relationship and friendship are cultivated over time. Neighboring can happen in a variety of ways. It can happen in a more planned way, like having a barbecue, or a more spontaneous way, where we're walking the dog and stop to have a chat with a neighbor. Either way, neighboring puts us in a position to be able to find out who our neighbor is, what's their story, and what might Jesus already be up to in their lives. So Jesus is pursuing his Father's mission in every one of our neighborhoods. There is, of course, a lot of mystery about how Jesus will actually work out his plan in each person's life. But this much we can be sure of, Jesus is uniquely preparing each person to receive what his Father would freely give them, the forgiveness of sins and life with him forever. So that is what Jesus is up to every day with every person in every one of our neighborhoods. And of course, he invites us to join him. Here is 
an important change in mindset for most church members. Jesus is inviting us to join him on his mission. He doesn't give us a mission to do for him. Jesus is on a mission and he invites us to come with him. The first time I realized Jesus was inviting me to come with him and not go for him was a great relief. If I go for Jesus, I am doing the work and seeing the results of what I can accomplish. Not a good plan. But when I go with Jesus, he is doing the work and I am seeing the results of what he can accomplish. Now that's a good plan. So you see, only Jesus can do Jesus' work. So let him. Our job isn't to try to do Jesus' work for him. Our job is to watch for the work Jesus is doing in the lives of the people around us and then to join him. We'll talk more about that in a future segment. Yeah, only Jesus can do Jesus' work. Only Jesus can die on the cross and rise again to take away people's sins. Only Jesus can know what's stirring around in the deep places of a, of a person's heart. Only Jesus can prepare a person so that when he brings us around to them, they're ready for that uh, seed of kindness, that pinch of hope, that cool cup of water of grace. <clears throat> Jesus speaks of this in John chapter 4, when he says to those with him, Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. When Jesus says people are ripe for harvest, he simply means they are ready for good news from God. Now, if I had been one of the disciples hearing Jesus say this, I would have wondered, how can anyone be right? I haven't even done anything here yet. However, Jesus is saying that if wherever we are, we will open our eyes and look at the people around us, we can know that the Spirit of God has already been at work in their lives long before we arrived on the scene. So Jesus says, count on it and look for it. God's already been at work in their lives. They may not understand it. They probably don't know it is him. But God has brought many of them to a point where they are right to encounter his good news. Jesus simply wants us to open our eyes and look for these people. So who is ready for a little news that is good in your various neighborhoods? For years, our family lived on a little farm with apple trees in the front yard. Apples would form on our trees in early summer. It wouldn't be too long before they were fully formed and turning red. However, if we tried to go and pick an apple out of the tree too early in the season, it would simply refuse to let go of the branch. What was the problem? The apple wasn't ready. Now contrast that with our experience in the early fall. We walk outside, we'd be underneath the tree, there'd be all those apples, and just a slight breeze, those apples would start raining down on our head. What was the difference? Well, the apples were now ready. Here's the mission lesson. If people are not ready, there will be no harvest, no matter how hard you yank on them. But once they are ready, they'll practically drop into your hands. So open your eyes and look around. Notice who's already there. Who's Jesus already working on? Who's almost right? Who's ready for a little kindness, a little hope, a little news that is good? You can count on this. Wherever you are, whoever you're with, Jesus is up to something. This is our new mission mindset. We get to join Jesus on his mission. We can do this. Let's find out how. Okay, so um, now were any of you able to read chapter 2? Most everybody read chapter 2. Okay, good. Then you already heard about the apple thing? Yeah. yeah. I think that's really, really a great metaphor. I think it's important for us to get a sense for that. So if you're on a mission with Jesus, um, how would you have any idea where people are and to use the term how ripe would how how would you find out how ripe they are? How would you come to know that? Sometimes they ask you about your church and uh, they seem more interested in if you put something in your conversation of oh, that's right, I've got to go to church tomorrow, we're doing this, we're doing that. And they perk up and go, oh, what's that all about? 
about. You know, you get kind of a little... <laughs> okay, all right. Now that presupposes, that is an excellent example, that presupposes that you're having a conversation with someone that's receptive. Is that fair? Is that fair? Right? Mm -hmm. So that talks about the relationships. Every, almost on every page in this book, I have somewhere in red letters, relationships, relationships, relationships. Because the whole thing is about, and, and the way I talked about it on Sunday was, I said, we need to have a relationship with God, and then we have relations with one another. You see what I'm doing here? Are you seeing this? And it's all then... We need a plus sign. We need to have a relationship with God and with one another. I can't do it like you do. So, I'm not, That's not a, I'm not a clergy. Official, right? Clergy, they have a whole class on that. I'm not a class, right. Did you pass that class? No. Okay. Uh, so, so when it comes to relationships, that that's God wants a relationship with you, so that you can with Him assist in the mission that He's on. You get to go with Him for other people. It's just so exciting. I, I just I think it's awesome. I hope you do. So let's let's go. Any ahas from the second video? Anything that you got out of this video that's like. Yeah. Kaboom. Anything? Well, the thing that came to mind, I, I don't know if it was chapter one or chapter two. Yes. They all kind of blend together. But I like to talk. No. And I bought a book. I haven't read it yet because I started it and I didn't like the way it read. But the title of it on the, on the cover is Listen, Love, Repeat. So, I'm really working hard at listening when I'm when I'm talking <laughs> when I'm in conversation with someone, letting them finish their thoughts because I lose it. Something spurs something in my mind, and I want to jump on it. But when I relax in Jesus, and I know He's busy at work, He's going to bring it to even my mind. So that I won't forget it if it's something that that person needs to hear or whatever. But I think in building relationship, that that's a that's a key uh, to always, yeah. always is to let you be you. And I want to, I want I want to know who you are. Instead, I'm always wanting <coughs> to know who I am somehow. Well, in a relationship, it's important that we know each other. Yeah. So. And that's okay that you want them to know who you are. Somewhere in the second chapter, it does talk about listening. I'm trying to go quickly on this, and I, and I can't. But what's, you know, the mathematics on this, right? You have one mouth and two ears. So, yeah. so what's really important is to listen. Now, what's the difference between hearing and listening, you know? Hearing is involuntary. You hear everything. Even when you don't want to hear it, it's still there, and you can't, it, hearing is involuntary. But listening is when you focus on a specific set of sounds. In other words, what somebody is saying, or what they're saying and what you can tell they mean, that's listening. And that is hard for many of us. Sometimes you'll, people think you're listening and you've already tuned them out, right? So you, you got that power. So that, so so if you keep rolling on about you, they're likely at some point to shut down. And you won't. And so what that doesn't do is it doesn't strengthen and build the relationship. Right. So, but it's something we all have to work at because I got stuff I need to tell you about me. <coughs> you know, it's, it's very natural for us all to be like that. Good. That's that's good. <coughs> Chris, something else that I think is is worth holding on to, which is she used the word relax. Right, mm -hmm. and and I would say, as, as you're saying, right, listening involves intent. You're, it's it's intent, an intentional action mm -hmm. that often you don't do when you're stressed, mm -hmm. right? And, and so often, uh, I'm talking with people who have somebody in their family who <laughs> they feel has wandered, right, from the Lord, and they are so stressed about what are they what they need to do. 
to bring this person back, right? And, sure. and am I prepared? And am I capable? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think these, these opening two chapters remind us we're not capable, right? We're not capable, right. but Jesus is, and we need to relax mm -hmm. and do the things we need to do and leave the heavy lifting to Jesus. He's done it all. Right. Yeah, he's done all the heavy lifting. Yeah. Many, many people will hear you. They'll hear you, right? They won't necessarily listen. One thing, uh, Kodak, uh, in their training and stuff, always repeat that when somebody mm -hmm. talks to you. Yes. And then you show your listening. Mm -hmm. you say, I don't do it. But I know that it was drummed in the lesson. Yep. Yep. Quite often. <laughs> yeah, it, you, I think it, it was a training where you would say something and then you say, now here's what I think I heard you say. You said, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It, it, so many of you have been through that yeah, training like yeah. ad nauseum. And it, and, but it, it works. It kind of, too, if you're coming, it kind of makes them stop and think about mm -hmm. what they said, mm -hmm. too. So yeah. it's kind of a, right. a active role listening. Role. Active, yeah. That's called active listening. Yeah, right? that, right. yeah. what I believe they call it. Yeah. <laughs> And Sharon online just said that the more time you give to somebody, right? If, if you give the time, you'll be shown what comes next, mm -hmm. right? And what God is up to and what the needs are. So that, that's a really key point. That's another issue, isn't it? Yep. Right? Time means you're patient. And you're not, and what Pastor mentioned before, you're not stressed, right? So go ahead. I'm sorry that it's 8 o'clock and we're supposed to be going home, but no, it's not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's okay, to, it's okay to just go over time a little bit when you're really listening. And that shows that you care because you've actually sacrificed and given something a little bit more. So now you got a heart thing going on with the caring as well. Yeah. Anything else? Other ahas from the video? I have one thought. Yes. I'm running into a situation right now, Ruthie and I are, that we are being, how do you say the word, thought? We're, roadblocks are being thrown up in front of us to see one person. And no matter what we do, and it, they're not being thrown up by the person, they're being thrown up by circumstances. <clears throat> and the two of us are going like, okay. We'll try again, <laughs> you know, but it, it seems to be, and we can't figure that one out, why, you know, uh, we're having a roadblock thrown up, you know, just for this one particular person, and uh, we're just going to keep trying, I guess, and maybe, I, I don't know what Jesus is up to. Well, there you go, and, and that, <laughs> that's it, right? That, that's the whole enchilada right there. Enchilada? Anybody ever had an enchilada? I don't know. It's really good. <laughs> it's good. Okay. He gets out a lot, I guess. Yeah. But, uh. Well, and I would just say that, Alan, obviously keep trying. Uh, but at the same point, uh, what I think the message is is this. Just because you can't get to him doesn't mean Jesus isn't there. Right? right? Mm -hmm. You're not bringing, uh, you know, Jesus isn't waiting on you arriving. He's already working. Mm -hmm. And in the right time, you'll get there. So you know what what's, what always, is always amazing to me is, is that when we think when we're working for Jesus. We pull everything into our finite structure, right? And then, then we feel like there are roadblocks instead of other opportunities. Mm -hmm. We used to have a we used to have a protocol that uh, in the office, if somebody canceled a meeting, we would take that time and use it. In other words, there was something intentional that we were going to do if somebody canceled a meeting, right? So if you have, where you, if you can't get to this person, maybe you should play down your frustration and pray up the needs you think might be there for that individual. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially those people of faith. We just don't, we don't avail ourselves of the opportunity to be in prayer over circumstances. We're, we're all caught up in us, right? Mm -hmm. But a suggestion would be, why don't you lay down not being able to get there and pray up what else is going to happen. Watch out, because you may be called there tomorrow. So, oh, yeah, Sh Sharon uh, has wisdom. She said that may just mean you're not supposed to be the next person there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, in fact, that was chapter 2. That was chapter 2, that, that maybe it's okay that it's not you. It maybe someone else. And I don't think we can downplay the fact that the enemy does prevent us sometimes, and that occurs. And but if we're in prayer about that person and what's happening yes. in their lives, we can be assured that if there's a path to be had, Jesus will provide it. Ellen, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you try to you try to talk to him, and all you get is crickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to you or something, that person will come I was just saying, well, it's a springboard of what Rich was saying about maybe this is the time if we can't get to that person, Helen, maybe it's a time for you and Ruthie to pray for that person and who is in their lives and it's not your turn yet or whatever. And also not disregard the fact that the enemy can be preventing and make sure through prayer that that's not what's happening by yeah. by. Asking God. If, well, you know. right, think about, take it back to Scripture, think about Paul's journeys. Yes. Right? They were not a straight line. <laughs> right? And, and the detours that happened, yeah. and, and the reasons that those detours happened. And right? What's the one that says, I would have come to you sooner, but Satan prevented me? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. If I, said, I remember that line. Well, if you want to take one, how many years was he in jail? Yeah, That's a little hope, don't you think? Yeah. If you're held up from, from going forward to the mission, you're all of a sudden you're locked up. That that's a little bit of a right. Or it takes us back to Genesis, where most of this group was is uh, Joseph, right? And all the yeah. time that was off track from a from a lower story perspective, yeah. that was right where he was supposed to be from from the upper story. That's a, 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 some of you have already heard me say this over and over again. I'm constantly amazed as we're reading. If we just step back and look at the amount of time. <clears throat> that each of the things that, whatever you're reading in Scripture, do yourself a favor, if you really want to get just absolutely overwhelmed with how God works, just try to figure out how much time these different things took. I mean, I, we were talking about um, all these children being born in a, in a recent, well, that takes nine months. So count the kids, do the math, that's years and years and years. That's, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Meanwhile, God was moving. He was up to something. And he was moving right through that whole thing. It's so exciting. Okay. Other aha. Uh -huh. Any other aha's? Uh aha's. -huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Missional living is living each day as if you were... This is in your book. Does anybody have the page on that real quick? 170. Thank you. Okay. Uh, living each day as if it were a mission trip. So if you get up in the morning... Actually, it's 169. Oops. Okay, 169. All right. We're still pretty impressed. 169, yeah. yeah. We are all impressed. Yeah. Uh, living each day as if it were a mission trip. So if I'm going on a mission trip, if you're, you and I are going on a mission trip, how are we prepared? How are we prepared? How do you, if, if you and I are going on a mission trip, how do we prepare for the mission trip? Through <laughs> prayer? That's first good start, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Martin Luther used to say, if I get up in the morning uh, and I, I know my agenda for the day, I have to spend time in prayer. But if I know I'm going to have a difficult day, I have to spend more time in prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, as you prepare missionally, it's really good to get up in the morning and have devo prayer and devotional time. I tend to make a habit these days, again, to be in prayer in bed before I even put my feet on the floor. Because <laughs> I don't know it's coming, right? So, how do you prepare for a mission? Well, you, you get yourself in the Word, get yourself in devotion, get yourself in prayer. Right? Like a toothbrush. You might need a toothbrush. toothbrush. Yeah. <laughs> or mints, anyway, if you're not going to brush your teeth. At least have mints, right? Okay. I just, had, I just had a thought. Yes. 
if you're preparing for a mission trip, and, and you're, let's say you're on the mission trip, and you're involved in the mission trip, you're doing stuff, and you're not necessarily preaching. Yeah. You might be cleaning somebody, cleaning a bathroom, yep. or teaching kids something, or making them a quilt, or you're doing activities, not necessarily preaching. And right. it, that kind of really fits in with this whole thing. Huge. It's about how you live Huge. your life. Yes, it's about how you live your life. Yeah, it's, it's what's referred to sometimes as silent witnessing. Yeah. It's, you're not saying anything. You're just doing and being in the place, in the moment. Um, good character. Yeah. You know, yeah. And there's people who've never seen the inside of a church that mm -hmm. live. Uh, they're showing you how to live a life. Mm -hmm. they, they they just know how to live and be with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's and those are the people we certainly want to get to know, right? And we have to make sure that they've got Jesus in their life because. <laughs> Good people, now listen, good people go to hell. If they're only works people, and they don't know Jesus, and have him as a personal savior, they can't be saved. Okay, let's go on. Yeah. <laughs> that's heavy. But no, that's heavy, but that's why it's so critical for us. We know, we know the Lord and the blessings he gives to us, including... Good people need to be witness to. They're, they're part of the mission journey. Jesus loves them too. Just like, um, what's a, somebody help me with the verse. The rain falls on the good and the bad or something like that. I can't good think of the just. just and the right. There you are, on the just and the what unjust. In Spain? Yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that, that's a different movie. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, over, the I'm in the movie bad called The Bible. Oh! Yeah. 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 The, the, the rain in Spain? No, yeah. Wasn't that? Rain in uh, Spain falls My Fair Lady. My Fair Lady. Lady. That's a good movie. Oh, I don't watch it. But anyway. No, but back to the to the Bible, the movie The Bible, which is yeah. the real story. Mm -hmm. No, it's 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 important to understand that as we go through life, when it rains, it rains on the good people and the bad people. The just, meaning that they are in Christ, and the unjust that are in the same way the sun shines on the wicked. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, enough of the wicked stuff. All right, let's Sorry. go to missional community. Missional community is a small group. What makes up a group? We do. Yeah, more than, yeah. More than one. We're, yeah. And Jesus, is, yeah. or in the scripture, I don't know if it's Jesus, says where two or three are, yeah, yeah, that's are gathered in my name. There am I in the midst of them. That's right, Jesus, that's a red letter. You know? So you know it, it's serious. So a small group of local neighborhood missionaries who gather together that's what makes up a missional community, like us tonight. And I think this, again, one of these things we don't want to miss here is that this is a study, but there's an agenda behind the study. He's trying to start a movement, right? And his movement that he's advocating for, he's trying to prepare people for, is this. One, that you would commit to living your life as a missionary, and two, that you'd commit to getting together with a group of like-minded people who would support and encourage you in that. Right? And, yeah. and so, so we, as we were preparing, we are talking about, is that the outcome, do we see that outcome happening uh, organically, or do we see that something that the church coordinates? And we still, we, we haven't figured it out. No, we're, we're clear on that. We're <laughs> clearly vague. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, but then. it's something to um, consider, right? You, you could have a group of three or four friends who, who are committed to this, and then what you're doing is, uh, just what they showed in the video, you're getting together socially, uh, you probably have some, I would assume, uh, at least a devotion, if not Bible study time, um, and you're praying together, and you're talking about, what do you see Jesus doing in your neighborhood? Right? How, how's he messing with you? Right. That, that's that's the crux of it. That's the basic conversation. What is Jesus up to, and how are you re how are you responding or not responding to it? Mm -hmm. So that it's it's really meant to be just an encouragement and an accountability system. And I, I think it's a pretty fascinating yeah. concept for the church to consider, because what that does is we don't sit in the building and wait for people to show up. 
right? Instead, now we've taken church out into our neighborhoods, and uh, and we're looking at what is God doing out here, right? It's, it's realizing I was uh, I had. Uh, First chapel, um, no, second chapel, second chapel with kiddos today, and we were talking about why do we get together here, and what is worship, right? And, and, and we talked about all the good things that happen when we get together for worship, but then with the older ones we talked about, but, but worship goes beyond this, this space, right? Worship is the way we live our lives, in the same way as we've talked about before, right? When we think of church, we think of a building, uh, we think of a, a specific organization, but we're the church. And so this model that he's advocating for is really taking it back to this understanding um, that you're the church wherever it is you are. And these missional communities would be, I mean, it's very early church in the way that it is. You know, get together in your house and talking uh, to each other about what do you think God is up to? Right? Now finish that statement way back when somebody says to you, but I'm good. I, I do this, I do that. And you say, but are you, what's a, what's a little, what's you the end? But are you what? Believe in God, Jesus. No, you have faith. faith you have faith. Do you, you have a relationship? I like that. That gives them a... I, I want something that really spells it out, but it doesn't hit them in between the eyes. Well, you got to be careful because sometimes yeah. people need a, a board with a spike in it. Some people really do. Most of the time, and this is, this is what's called soft approach, and we need to be first soft approach building relationship. So it's relationship first. And then you go from there. I wouldn't. So yeah, it, it, you know, how's your relationship with the Lord? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? By right. the way, that's another issue. If you talk about God or Lord, you know who that could be. Right. Yeah, I... could be Muhammad. Yeah. Could be Buddha. Could right. So you gotta be careful there. Jesus is it. So you, at some point, you gotta get to the Jesus point. I feel you have to be direct, but you have to be soft. Yeah. You, you can't... Yeah. In, yeah. A caring, in a caring way. Well, yeah, I take, yeah. take you back to the apples, right? Mm -hmm. Helen, you got to know this. If it's God's will for this message to get across, no matter how poorly you do with this, it'll work. Right? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus will do it. Um, and if it's not the time, no matter how brilliant you are in the way you present it, 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 it may not work. So you have to take the stress off yourself. You just try. We're only called to sow. The Spirit of God reaps. That's I'm a waterer. <laughs> what? I'm a waterer, okay. <laughs> I don't sow and I don't, let's see, what is it? You plant. Plant the, is the, the seed. Plant, That's fertilize. The, yeah, whatever. Water. Anyway, soil, water, sun, I'm the waterer. Water. Irrigation specialist. Yes. <laughs> I think I think she need, I think she needs a special T-shirt. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the vocabulary as we go here. Neighborhood is a network, a network of people to which you have regular access. So it doesn't. So if you have breakfast on Tuesday mornings with a group, or if you go for coffee Thursday lunch hour. Or you're with, a, you're with a network of some sort. Or if that, you're a group of retirees that meets the first Friday of every month or, or whatever. You've already got a network. And you remember what they did in here? He, he does, um, you belong to Rotary and in Chapter 2, if you belong to Rotary or, or other organizations or whatever, what have you. You're already in a network. That's your neighborhood. So you have to go out and find people all over the place. You're already connected with the group. So that makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's network uh, or neighborhood, neighborhood. And then neighboring is the interaction that helps foster a relationship of friendship. Because you can have bad relations. Any of you have, don't raise your hand, uh, bad relatives? Um, so we don't want bad relationships. So uh, you want friendships, 
that are good and positive. The soil is whatever it is for now as the Lord sees fit. It's important. Okay, anything else on the words, on the vocabulary? So my word is relationship that I would add to that. In fact, add, add to all of these because of the relationship we have with God and what we're called to do with one another in Christ. Okay. Okay, only, next one is only Jesus can do Jesus things. Boy, I like that. Um, what are these Jesus things and what does this mean? So what, what does it mean? What is it? Oops, sorry. So only Jesus can do Jesus things. What, do, what does that mean? Speak Here. to our heart. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Speak to our heart. Salvation, maybe? I was just going to say, I feel like we can't save people. I mean, Jesus can. Yeah, you can't save anyone. Right. You, we, we can't save a single soul. It's only faith in Jesus Christ that will save someone. Does that make sense? Can you follow that? Right? He's the only one that can do it. And he already did it. So the job is done. All that work stuff is done. Now we have the privilege of going with him on sharing that message. It's pretty light stuff. R&R, &R, redeem and restore. Yeah. You saw that several times in this chapter. Redeem, Jesus does it, and he restores Right? The brokenhearted, all that. Right? That's pretty exciting. I, I, I know you're all real excited from what you want. And, it's, and, it, and it might be a little bit counterintuitive. Yeah. Because it's, and so if you're looking for what Jesus is up to, he's going to go find the messes. <laughs> right? People who are struggling. Um, right? People that need redemption, restoration. People that are uh, suffering from brokenness, going through... Uh, struggles, people who are isolated, uh, you know, people who are hurting. If there are places that to our eyes we can see uh, are calling for mercy and restoration, um, uh, God is likely up to something there. Yep. I had to tell you, everybody knows that I was widowed in January. And I got to the point where I said, Jesus, fill up my life. I've got to do something. Fill up my life. <laughs> yeah, no, that's how I, pray for I can't even think. And the topper came three days ago. And I'm so ill-equipped to deal with this one. I held the mother of the girl that was killed on the motorcycle. Oh. They're my neighbors. She grew up with my children and all she did was scream I want her back I want my baby back something told me this wasn't the time for me to say anything about Jesus or God I just held her and I told her to cry it out I said go ahead honey just cry I figure I am there, she knows me, she knows I am, you know, affiliated very deeply with my religion. I don't know if I could put that love into her by holding her. I have the whole family. My neighbor is the grandmother. My other neighbor is the daughter, or the sister. I have them all right two doors down from me. Wow, did God give me a big one. Mm -hmm. And But I think I had the wisdom this time not to bring God into it at the point where she's screaming. But, but you did bring God into it. Yeah, you sure did. Right? So that, and this, this is the point that you don't want to miss. You brought God's mercy, right? And God's comfort. Mm -hmm. Right? God didn't ask you to save her. But he put you there for a reason when she needed to cry. Mm -hmm. Because he, he wanted somebody to wrap their arms around her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And you did that. You were Jesus in that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it is wonderful being my age. Because 
And as I did ask God to fill me up with the loss of Bruce, I am feeling wiser and I am feeling more ability to help people. And I didn't shy away from going down there and walking into the midst of it, which I knew was going to be hard. And it will be hard. But, you know, God just gives you this opportunity. And I find myself just praying very silently as I'm going through it. Tell me what to say. Tell me what to do. Another lady told me something, and I had to get back to her. And at the time, I had the wisdom to keep my mouth shut and not, not condemn her, but plan in my head, I'm coming back. <laughs> you know, I'm coming back. We'll talk again. I didn't say that to her. Mm -hmm. But it's surprising the wisdom that you obtain because you're asking to be filled up, mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. something in your life that's going to take the place of something that you've lost. And wow. <laughs> so uh, don't, ever, don't ever think that you won't have the right words or the lack of words. It's, I'm finding that out in, you know, but while you're saying your prayers, pray for them and pray for me to have the words and have the the timing of what needs to be mm -hmm. said and when and to be there and I mean that's that's so terrific that's so mind-bogglingly in your human mind it was so wrong so wrong to have happened and you can't conceive why that child left this earth with so much she had so much to give, and now she's gone, leaving everybody, and we all have to find a way to comfort, you know, the people that are so stricken. But I'm sorry. No, 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 this is, no, this is exactly what this is about. Mm -hmm. yeah. This yeah. is precisely about walking with Jesus. And your hug, that was a wrapper of Jesus. Um, Jesus himself says, take my yoke, that means bind together, and you were yoked there, and you will continue to be yoked there, and so as the spirit moves and the time comes, he'll present, he'll present the opportunity and the words for you, mm -hmm. he always does, he always does. Yeah, and I really like what you said, that it's overwhelming the wisdom you have when you ask for it, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the wisdom you have because you're older. Right, because people can grow older and not any wiser. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, right? It, it's, it's, it's a gift from God that is offered when we ask for it. Right? And it's surprising how people, I know somebody wrote me a note from one of the groups I'm in, not affiliated with church, and they said to me, we know you are a loving Christian. You will get through this. And I'm thinking, how did they know that? I don't, to this group, I don't preach. You know, and it's interesting because, you know, as you, you've taught us, we do project our, our, you know, association, our faith. We you know, do project it. And that kind of took me by surprise that somebody said that. And, you know, so we are missionaries. Even though I didn't know I was being a missionary, yeah, I was. And that's pretty awesome, isn't it? How the Spirit of God yeah. moves through you and people see it. Yeah. They may not say a whole lot, but here comes an opportunity and it comes back to you that in your way of life, in your presentation of everything that you're all about, they can yeah. see the Jesus in you. It's kind of scary. Awesome. Well, no, it's <laughs> awesome. It's a privilege. It is humbling. It's a, it's a big absolutely. responsibility. It is. 
is gift. Mm -hmm. It's a big gift, right? It's a big gift to watch God work through you. Yes, yes. Right? Uh, your friends online, Helen, are just thanking you for sharing that. John said, what a beautiful testimony. Thank you for sharing. Oh. April said, Helen, you are a strong and beautiful woman. You are a temple of the Lord. Keep giving God grace to people that need the comfort. You're doing his work. You asked, and he is delivering, and I will be praying for you and for them. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, I hate to say this, but it's after eight already. Mm. Oh, that don't say it. We're having fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if you would <clears throat> join me again, and we'll close with the benediction together. Okay. And now it is time, time to begin your new life, life as, as an everyday missionary. No need to be nervous. No need to be afraid. This is what Jesus has been preparing you for. Remember, Remember, you're not, not being sent out for him. You're being invited to come along with him. him. And besides, you'll have a little, little help from your friends. Your friends. So, so join, join Jesus on his redemptive mission. In the name of the Father, who has been pleased to give you his kingdom. In the name of the Son, who has risen from the dead. And even now is on the loose in your community. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who has given you eyes to see and a heart to respond to the people that Jesus has placed around you. Amen. Go have some fun. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for being with us. So chapters for next week, if you're able, is three through six. If you're not able, just show back up again. Uh, and again, uh, if, if your schedule allows and you want to, uh, the Sunday morning at 945 is not totally a copy of what we're doing here. So if you want to uh, join in for both, you're more than welcome. Um, but we'd be thrilled to have you at either. So uh, go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>